For as long as I can remember, my mother always loved roller coasters. When I was very young, she would take me to a local amusement park for kids, Kitty Park in Brooklyn, Ohio. It had a great array of pint-sized rides. They were flat ones, fast ones, slow ones, spinny ones, and of course, a roller coaster, the Little Dipper. It was a great introduction to the joys of such entertainment. As they say, it's all fun and games until, in this case, until, was me getting tall enough to ride the adult rides at the big amusement parks, of which we had two great ones relatively close to where we lived, Geauga Lake and Cedar Point. I recall vividly my mother trying to introduce me to the thrill of roller coasters. Not fun. Not fun at all for me. For her, she was having a rip-roaring good time. Now, keep in mind the time period here, it's the mid-1970s and I was just getting tall enough to participate in this strange activity of scaring oneself silly, laughing insanely about it, and then repeating it. In those days, the roller coasters were usually wooden and simply a stomach-dropping sequence of hills, hairpin turns, more hills, screeching halt, jump out, and get back in line. Lap bars only. No loopy, twisty, turn you upside down steel coasters that require over the shoulder harnesses to keep the willing or not participant in their seat. Even so, those early days of mom and me on wooden coasters was enough to scare the bejeebers out of me. I could not understand why this was fun. Up, down, up, down, and the feeling of coming off the seat a little with just that lap bar to hang on to? Mm -mm. Incomprehensible how this could be fun for anybody. Nope, I just wasn't digging it. Fast forward 10 years. Now in my teens and my high school buddies want to make a summer day trip to Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. I'm all in. I love rides that weren't coasters. Anything spinny especially. The spinnier, that's not really a word, but it's descriptive, no? The more I loved it. No motion sickness, nothing. Then the inevitable happened. They wanted to go on the newfangled, crazy steel coasters and the wooden ones. All of it. Boy. Luckily, I didn't hang around with people who were into peer pressure. Quite the opposite. They respected my fear and gave me my space. At the same time, they really tried to convince me it was perfectly safe. And if I wanted to try, they'd hold my hand, etc., etc. I had great high school friends. And eventually, they convinced me to try it. Who knew it could be so much fun? All those years I'd been missing out. My new opinion? Roller coasters rocked. Just like that. I don't know what changed, but it did. And now I was addicted and understood why my mother loved it so much. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, high school buddies. We spent that summer day trying every single roller coaster in the park. And there were many in the mid-1980s. Some we rode more than once. All this in addition to all the spinny rides we could squeeze in between. And the swingy ones, too. It was a great day because I was with my friends and we had fun together. It was an even better day because I'd conquered a fear and realized that the feared thing had never been worth all the anxiety I'd wasted on it. Fast forward another 30 years this time. Now I've been married a good long time and haven't been to an amusement park in quite a while. Sadly, I'd learned that rides that spin are no longer on my fun menu. Dang it. Age can be so cruel. It somehow disallowed me from spinning excessively without nausea. Now, green. Ugh. So off to every roller coaster we could find and enjoy most of them we did. Nothing like making the best of what you've got, right? At the end of the day, my husband asked me for the hundredth time to please try the death drop type ride he loves so much. The first of this kind many years previous had been called Demon Drop. Apropos, in my humble opinion, I really didn't like it in the 90s. I couldn't understand what would have changed. That's a lie. I did know. Here's what changed. Rather than being harnessed neatly into a big metal box, which was cut out in the front, the seats were now hung on the outside of a ring that ran up and down a very, very, very tall tower. This was insanity. Who in their right minds found this sort of thing amusing? And best of all, they now gave you a choice. Shoot you up fast and then you drift down or slowly raise you up and then shoot you back down to earth. Oh, yippee. 
nuts, I tell you. But my husband has always been the type to insist and insist. So what the heck? I'll try it once and then we're leaving. Agreed? Agreed. And off we go to wait in a relatively short line because how many people can be crazy enough to do this sort of thing? And I had to make a choice. Shoot up, drift down, or slow pull up, shoot down. Would I like to die from a heart attack on the way up or on the way down? That's basically what it came to. I chose to go up slow and drop down fast. I thought that was the closest thing to roller coaster. Our turn came and we chose seats, got ourselves strapped, harnessed, clamped onto this tiny little perch, which was nothing more than a bicycle seat welded onto a ring of steel. And the time was now. Up, up, up we went. Slowly, painfully slowly. While I was losing my mind in the two hours it took to get to the top. All right, I'm exaggerating. Brian was encouraging me to gaze out onto the scene below. We could see all of the park, the entirety of Lake Erie, and half of Canada. Okay, again, I exaggerate. And then they just hung us there. Another two hours. Okay, it felt like it. Legs dangling in midair 200 feet above the earth. And just like that, whoosh, down we fell. What a rush. No joke. It was amazing. Legs flew out, hair flew up, stomachs hit the backs of our throats, and then we were back down at ground level. Amazing, really. Once again, I was surprised at my thrill. I discovered I loved the adrenaline rush. We got unstrapped and immediately ran back in the line for another go. How can one have such a love-hate relationship with fear? It seems wholly unnatural, but on further exploration, it's the most natural thing really. Fight or flight, run away or confront and conquer, opposite sides of the same coin. Many of us love to be scared. Amusement park rides, like in the story I just told you, haunted houses, scary books and movies. Others love the more real challenge of rock climbing, race car driving, deep sea diving. In those activities, the participants follow strict protocol to make it as unlikely as possible that fun thrill will turn to real danger. The caveat in those scenarios is that it's only fun when we are pretty confident that it isn't or won't turn real. Adrenaline with mitigation, danger with a safety net. Some call it adrenaline addiction, especially when we feel compelled to repeat the exposure to fear or danger. However, it can be a way for us to cope with the anxiety that fear can bring. Every time we do something that scares us and succeed, we're bolstered in our confidence. To do or not to do is obviously a personal choice, but the key word is choice. Don't linger and agonize over the decision. Engaging in prolonged anxiety and fear for example, deliberating whether to participate or walk away is a drain on us. It's exhausting. We better serve ourselves and our future by making a decision and following through. Over-deliberation leads to vacillating on choices and eventually it all becomes too confusing to move forward. Weigh the options well and when you're out of arguments, decide yay or nay and move forward. And remember that every time you face a fear and discover it's not as scary as you thought, you have won a victory for yourself. Lingering too long on the edge of a steel ring perched on a bicycle seat gets to be less fun every moment. Take the plunge. Mom knew what she was doing by introducing me to thrill rides.